Hey guys, Sean and Christy with Long Long Honeymoon here. This week we are talking Thailand and we're going to give you at least 17 tips for visiting this fantastic Southeast Asian country. Tip number one, watch out for the monkeys. Monkey jumping, monkey jumping, one, two, That's right, when you're visiting certain rural areas in Thailand, you will see some wild monkeys. Remember, these monkeys have opposable thumbs. So when you visit these areas, make sure that you have sunglasses or anything that is loose on your body, like tucked away in a zippered area or wear one of those like straps around your neck with your sunglasses so they can't jerk them away. All right. Monkey selfie. Anna. Also, if you have a cell phone, have some sort of like pop socket or strap on it where you've got a good hold on it because we've seen them take phones out of people's hands. Yeah, we did see one Russian lady lose her sunglasses. Mm -hmm. The monkey snatched the case out of her hands, jumped back over ravine, and then dropped everything <laughs> into the ravine. Those glasses were gone. Gone. Oh, oh, no. oh come on, monkey. I bet the park people could. Oh, uh, oh, look out, look out. Hey. I know, he's pretty aggressive. Nope. You're behaving like a wild animal. You're not getting my glasses, boy. And speaking of cell phones, bring an unlocked cell phone because with an unlocked cell phone, you can get a tourist SIM card. For about 10 bucks, you'll have unlimited data so you'll be able to access the internet wherever you go, which is an incredible help when navigating the country. Absolutely, you have access to apps that can give you tours, you have access to maps, you have access to Grab, which is the version of Uber that they use here in Thailand. Yeah, Uber sold their business to Grab in Southeast Asia. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> so when you land in Thailand at the airport, you can buy your SIM card at the airport mm -hmm. and you'll have internet from moment one, pretty much, of being in the country. So in addition to using Grab to get around Thailand, there's a, a lot of great sort of public transportation possibilities. If you're in Bangkok, you want to ride the SkyTrain. It's yeah. fast, it's cheap, sort of like a subway train, except it's above ground. They actually do have a subway as well. So depending on where you're going, you might need to take that instead. But they're both really cheap. They're super easy to use. They're fast. You don't have to worry about traffic. So definitely look into that. If you're traveling solo, you can actually hitch a ride on the back of a licensed motorcycle. Sort of like a moped taxi service, and you'll see them everywhere. So if you're traveling by yourself, that's definitely an option. If you're not traveling by yourself and you're in a group of two to four people, you can also hail what is called a tuk-tuk. It's sort of like a moped with like a little cart on the back that usually holds around four people, sometimes fewer, sometimes more, depending on the layout. But those, you know, can weave in and out of traffic similarly to a moped and get you where you want to go a little faster than a taxi a lot of times, and it's usually cheaper. Yeah, we've had some interesting experience with Tuk Tuks. Uh, as far as it being cheaper, it will depend on your negotiation skills, because yeah. sometimes the price will start up here and you can counter offer and negotiate it down here. There's no meter on a Tuk Tuk. Right. So you agree on a price with the driver. Before you get in. Central Festival Mall. Central. Don't wait and negotiate after you get to where you're going. So just make sure you negotiate before you step inside. If the price isn't what you're willing to pay, just say no thanks and walk away. You can also ask in your hotel what to expect price-wise for wherever you're gonna be going that day. And they'll usually give you a general idea. 100 baht, 150 baht, 200 baht, 50 baht, you never know. And by the way, at the moment of making this video, the currency conversion for Americans is about 30 baht for $1. Mm -hmm. Dollar goes a long way here. Yeah. You can get a nice meal in a street market, more about that later, for 60 baht, so a couple of bucks. Yeah. 
and it's really good food. <laughs> and a tuk tuk ride might cost you 150 to 200 baht, so that could be you know five dollars more or less depending yeah. on what you negotiate. Now we have had pretty much no problems whatsoever anywhere in Thailand with regard to interacting with other people except a couple of tuk-tuk drivers. There are a couple of little scams that run in Bangkok. One of them is called the Lucky Buddha scam. They want to take you to see the Lucky Buddha and there's no Lucky Buddha. Um, basically they're going to take you there, they're going to tell you, oh it's closed today and instead they're going to take you to some market where they want you to buy clothes or buy trinkets or whatever and they basically get a kickback from the people that own the market. It's not dangerous, it's just a waste of your time. So if somebody's trying to take you there, just say no. Depending on where you are, there are different transportation options. We're in Chiang Mai at the moment and here they are famous for the red cab or the red truck. It's also called a Song Tu, I believe that's how you say it, which translates roughly to two benches and that's because it's basically two benches in the bed of a pickup truck with a roof on it. They have a set price on the outside of the truck that says 30 baht per person currently. Basically $1, $1 per, person. per person. It's a great deal. There's no set route. Flag one down or you will find one parked on a street corner just waiting for people. You talk to the driver, you tell them where you want to go. Could we go to um, Wat Frasing? Wat Frasing. Yeah. Okay. And if he agrees to take you, you hop in the back. You ride to the destination, you get out, you go to the window, you pay him your 30 baht per person and you go on your way. Now, if you're wanting to go somewhere outside the city, it may be more than the, the standard rate. And again, negotiate before you get in so you know what you're paying before you take off. <laughs> I like them. This is Sarah from <laughs> Kathmandu, <laughs> Nepal. Kathmandu, Nepal. Yeah, I got my pants. Thank you, Sarah. You're, Thank you're, you're you. Top. You have a hard bargain. You're very tough. But fair. You happy right? But very nice. Are you happy right? Well, I'm happy. Bye. I guess I'm happy. With regard to making transactions, we have typically been using cash and you need to, before you leave the United States, notify your bank and or credit card company that you're going overseas. Yeah. So that they don't freeze your account when they see transactions coming in suddenly from Southeast Asia. Yeah. If they know you're traveling, you can just go up to an ATM machine here and you will end up paying a fee, but you take out some money from the ATM and you've got walking around money for cash. Now, yeah. of course, in many business establishments, you can use your credit card. Visa, for example, is accepted in most of the major businesses here. Yeah, but if you're going to a street market or a food market, then you're going to need cash. And you really should go to these street markets, especially the night markets. Yeah. They are so much fun because you really sample the local culture, all the community really comes out for these markets. And you'll not only have great sort of shopping opportunities, there's wonderful foods to sample. The food is usually inexpensive yeah. and it's delicious. These yeah. are like the same recipes, even better than what you're getting from Thai restaurants in North America. You're getting the real deal here, mm -hmm. especially in the little local markets. I would encourage you to maybe go a little bit off the beaten path and go where the locals go. Yeah. I mean, like last night, uh, we have a great little neighborhood market near the old town here in Chiang Mai, and we ran into some locals that are have become friends of ours over the last week who were just there having their dinner at the market, and it was, you know, kind of special to see where the locals eat. Tom Yum Luam Mitale. Tom Yum Noodles Seafood. Yeah, seafood. Is it good? Good. Good, right? Gab gun gab. Gab gun gab. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Kyle. The other thing that we would really recommend is booking some excursions. Book with a company that has good reviews online and you'll sort of know what you're getting into before you go. But it's a good way to have someone that is a local give you a tour of whatever area you're wanting to see. We did a rafting trip, we went to an elephant sanctuary, we did a cooking class which included a visit to the food market 
And that was really interesting because we had our own personal guide that took us through the food market, sort of explained different foods that were being prepared, fresh and ingredients that they were selling as well and sort of telling us a little bit of the history of Thai food and what they use and why they use it. And then also some of the delicacies that they eat that, you know, we think is unusual or, you know, strange or what have you. But to them, it's just, you know, what, what grandma made 50 years ago. Okay. Small bones, you can eat. My, like my sister, they love the head part of the fish, all the fish. Yeah. They eat the, the, eyebrow, the, the eyebrows, you know, like right. everything. And so it's really interesting to learn more about that from somebody who's grown up in the culture and knows it firsthand. And with regard to the food, there's plenty of pad thai, there's plenty mm -hmm. of tom kaga soup, there's plenty of all of those thai recipes that you already know and love. There are also some pretty unusual foods here that are pretty exotic to our North American taste buds and stomachs and I would encourage you to sample some of those. Now we have not eaten every single thing that we saw fried and served up on a platter, but we have tried some unusual foods here. For example, I was pretty proud of myself because the other night I ate my first ant eggs. That's yeah. right, we ate the eggs of ants. Put it in your mouth. Well, I like because eggs. Just pop it it's weird because if you think about it, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> Best ant eggs I've ever had. <laughs> it's good, right? It's like yeah. pop inside, juicy. Oh yeah, it is like corn. Yeah, and juicy. Mm -hmm. Pop inside. How were your ant eggs? It was like corn. And imagine if you deep fry with an omelet. Oh, that'd be good. An omelet with like palate popping texture is nice. Yeah. They were actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> They're a delicacy here. Pretty expensive, really, because yeah. to harvest these ant eggs, they have to climb up into trees mm -hmm. and retrieve the eggs. Yeah. And I know it sounds utterly appalling, but if you didn't know what it was yeah. and somebody sprinkled them on your salad, you'd think that tasted pretty good. So apparently we could get the insect sampler platter for 50 baht. So I think we're just going to pick one the most delicious insect we can find. Big crickets. My first cricket. Ready? Here goes. Crunchy, chewy. It's really not bad. What does it taste like? It tastes a lot like grasshopper. Um, you know, maybe a little bit like a beetle. I've eaten a few gnats in my life. But. Cricket. Too many crickets. You're gonna eat it. Doesn't really have a taste. No. Really? It's almost like if you ate like a crunchy oat or something. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, it tastes like nothing. <laughs> it would taste like whatever seasoning you put whatever on seasoning it. you put on it is what it would taste like. I had some cayenne pepper, some good Cajun seasoning. They'd probably be pretty tasty. Yeah, Cajun crickets. Now you're talking. We could now survive in the wilderness if we had to because we can eat crickets and ant eggs with confidence. <laughs> mm, that'll make a good mm. salad. Okay. The big fish. Okay. Big bye -bye. fish. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Kapum kap, kapum kap. It's okay. <laughs> I'm learning. Kapum kap. Bob Marley. Uh, Bob Marley. <laughs> rock and roll. Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> reggae. It's reggae. Wow, just to do. Do 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 do. And with regard to local culture, I also encourage you to talk to locals. Yeah. Two handsome men. Okay. <laughs> same, same. Same, same. same, same. same, same. <laughs> because for me, some of the most special experiences that we've had on this trip have been just interacting with tuk tuk drivers or uh, canoe guides or the tour guides yeah. or, or just, the ladies at the massage parlors or, or the people know. in the market. A lot of people will speak at least a little bit of English. They like to practice their English. If you can learn a few phrases in Thai, yeah. that goes a long way. They appreciate that you're making an effort to speak a little Thai. Nobody expects you to be fluent. Men. 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 
วัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับครับครับ And you know you don't expect them to be speaking the Queen's English necessarily, <laughs> but you can communicate, and those are just really special memories. I think just yeah. talking We to locals. We met some really really nice people. They want you to love their country, and if you express how much you've enjoyed it here, that makes them happy, and it just makes for a great experience. One of our favorite excursions, as Christy mentioned, was an elephant sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And we would encourage you to look for elephant sanctuaries if you decide to do this activity that are treating their elephants in the right way. Because where they're truly sanctuaries for the elephants, not somewhere that's going to make them perform tricks or take you on a ride. You really just want to see the elephants roaming around open land, eating, bathing. You want it to be ethical, humane, and that way you can feel good about spending your money there because you know that it's going to help take care of the elephants that have been rescued from logging or circuses or just things like that. Just exploitation on the side of the road. Sometimes you're in a rural area, you might see an elephant just tied up by the side of the road, and they use them as a tourist attraction, obviously. But when you go to one of these sanctuaries, for me, it's more than enough just to be close to the elephants, to be able to walk up and interact with the elephants. To be able to, to feed it a banana. To feed them bananas, to give them a mud bath, to bathe them. Yeah. You know, it's really special just to be able to spend that time with these incredible animals. Yeah. So I really encourage you to do that. That's been one of our favorite activities so far. Yeah. And be wary of other things that you can do here that may not be the greatest for the animals. Be careful about the excursions that you choose and make sure that they are bettering the country rather than bringing it down. So I just bought a little bit of street food, chicken breast. One thing I can tell you is that Bangkok is a hot city. Uh, we're here in February. It's about 85 degrees outside and it's humid. It's about 88% humidity. Feels a little like Alabama <laughs> in early summer. So I think you come here, you just got to embrace the heat. Talk a little bit about packing. No matter what time of the year you come to Thailand, it's going to be hot. Yes. The only question is how hot and will it be raining? <laughs> We've been here in February and March. It has not rained a single day, but it has been hot every day, like 90 degrees-ish every yeah. day. Now at night, here in the north of Thailand, it'll cool off at night to around 60 or so degrees Fahrenheit. But no matter what time of day, it's going to be hot, so prepare for that. Yeah. But at the same time, ladies, if you're going into a lot of temples, which you mm -hmm. should do when you're in Thailand, Absolutely. you need to dress modestly. So what does that mean? Basically, you have to have your sh shoulders covered, so no tank tops, no spaghetti straps, that sort of thing. And you can't wear short shorts or short skirts. So it needs to come down to the top of your knee. If you happen to be wearing shorts or you happen to be wearing a tank top, a lot of temples will have wraps that you can borrow while you're touring, but you have to keep it on out of respect, or you can just bring your own. Or the other option is you can buy some fun flowy pants that they sell here, or these sort of wraps that you can buy, and they're super cheap on the street. You'll see everybody wearing them because once you get here, you'll be like, wow, those pants are cute, and they're flowy and lightweight, and I'm not going to be as sweaty in that. So you'll end up wanting to buy some. So leave a little room in your luggage to buy some of these fun little pants and wraps because you'll end up buying them anyway. And that way you'll have proper attire to go into the temples. Yeah, that's another good reason to underpack because you're gonna see some items like that, like this t-shirt that you wanna pick up along the way. And it's a lot of fun to buy those things. I like the red. You like the red? Yeah. 
Roll Tide. When your stuff gets dirty, you can have laundry done here very affordably. Yeah. Uh, we've had several loads of laundry done. Yesterday, we had a load done and it cost 50 baht a kilo. Mm -hmm. And we, we had a huge mound of laundry. It was eight kilos. That translated to 400 baht or about $13. Yeah, and it was the ready the next day. So we dropped it off yesterday around I don't know, two in the afternoon, and it was ready by seven this morning. And that's washed and folded. Don't overpack because laundry services all throughout Thailand are readily available and they're easy to find. You can usually just ask the front desk at your hotel, where can I have laundry done by the kilo? Because if you just say you want laundry done, they're gonna want you to send out your laundry with them and they charge you by the piece. So it's gonna be a lot more expensive. <laughs> Let's talk about shoes for a minute. Every time you go into a temple, you're gonna to have to take off your shoes. Anytime you go to a Thai person's house, you're gonna to have to take off your shoes. And sometimes some of the small businesses are located in people's homes. For example, with laundry. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to go to any of the massage parlors, which I highly recommend, you have to take your shoes off before you go in there as well. So you wanna bring some shoes that are easy to remove and put back on. Massage here is everywhere. There are massage parlors every probably 100 feet when you walk down the street. Go. Don't go to the fancy Western style spa because you're basically gonna just be ha doing what you're gonna do at home at a spa and it's gonna be just as expensive. Here, currently I am getting a one hour foot massage for 200 baht. So that's about $7. It's a great deal. Everybody goes and gets massage here. It's really a, an important part of Thai culture. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've probably heard of Thai massage. You yeah. know, in fact, in one of the most uh, renowned temples in Bangkok, they have a school of massage on the property. Yeah, it's and you that can actually important. go there and get a massage. Here's the hunter in her natural element. Very funny. And with regard to shopping in Thailand, you're not restricted to night markets and shopping. In fact, they really have nicer mega malls here than we have in North America. Bangkok especially has some of the most incredible shopping malls you will ever step foot in. They make our American malls look pitiful. <laughs> I mean, really, if you're in the market for a Bentley or a McLaren, yeah. you can find you can one find in the, the mall. Bangkok mall. <laughs> McLaren usually builds an incredible supercar, but unfortunately someone at the factory goofed this one up and put the steering wheel on the wrong side. I mean, these malls are crazy. They're like six or seven stories tall. They're huge. And sometimes there will be two or three malls next to one another. Right. Like, and they'll have all sorts of activities there. You can go bowling, you can go ice skating, you can go to the movies. Every kind of food that you could possibly want, fast food or nice sit down restaurants, you'll find in the mall. Every Western store brand that you can think of, they're all there, plus things that are popular over here. <laughs> wanted to wrap up by telling you some of the sites we found helpful traveling around Thailand. Yeah, Goda um, is a great place to book hotels. They just have more choice of the Asian hotel chains and local hotels. A lot of the hotels here are independently owned, so they're not going to be like a Hilton or a Marriott or that sort of thing. They're just going to be small independent hotels. And there are a lot of great ones to choose from, and Agoda has most of them at really great prices. We've also booked with Orbitz. It's very popular in the U.S., but they do have listings here. I would say there's probably more listings that are going to be more Western style hotels, but it is an option to use. Next stop, Thailand. Yeah. As far as booking flights, I recommend Air Asia. They are sort of like the Southwest Airlines of Southeast Asia. And so you can book cheap, direct flights to a lot of places around the country. You can also check out a site called Cheap O Air. So it's cheap, the letter O, and then Air. And they have uh, flights from Air Asia, Bangkok Airways, Thai Airways, and you can sort of compare prices and routes and that sort of thing. TripAdvisor will give you lots of detailed information on different hotels, different excursions, different parts of town to visit, restaurants, any of that sort of thing.
Sorry guys, that was at least 17 <laughs> tips for planning your visit to Thailand. It's a fantastic country. You've got great food, just warm, friendly people, incredible culture and history with all the different Buddhist temples to visit, natural beauty from the coast and like down Phuket Island, the PP Islands, and all the way up to the northern area with the mountains. We've gone whitewater rafting. We've done a lot here and I still feel there's more to a do. A lot more to do. We really love Thailand and would encourage anyone to pay it a visit. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family that might be interested in visiting Thailand or they just want to see what we've been doing. Yeah, rest assured, we will be back with our Airstream doing Airstream travel soon. But remember, 50 years ago, Airstream founder Wally Byam led Airstream caravans around the world. Airstreaming has always been about international travel. We can't personally afford to lug our Airstream with us everywhere we go, not without Airstream sponsoring us or something. So Airstream, if you're listening, but we're gonna be back talking about sort of hardcore RV topics soon. Big snake, big snake in here. And we will also roll out some dedicated videos, diving a little deeper into the Philippines and Thailand and showing you in detail some of the things we've experienced in Southeast Asia. Because these experiences have been really special and we want to share them with you. Yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. Leave us a comment down below if you've ever been to Thailand. What was your favorite thing? And if you haven't been, why would you want to come and what would you want to see? Let us know. Until next time, guys. Loloho. Loloho. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It was so much fun. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. It was a pleasure. We are students <laughs> from Chiang Mai University. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. So you are with uh, Chiang Mai University? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. And you're asking some questions about Chiang Mai becoming a world heritage yes. site. Yeah. Okay, uh, as a tourist, uh, how can you uh, promote Chiang Mai? I will promote Chiang Mai through my YouTube channel. We'll be doing videos about Thailand and especially about Chiang Mai. And I've just seen so many beautiful places here in Chiang Mai since I've been here. So many beautiful temples, met so many wonderful people that I really want to share it with the world. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.